Hey, as you can see, there's nothing on the wall here. What is happening? Oh my heck. Well, we're at the Apothecarium in the whole month of October and November, so I decided to paint a spooky scene for this art off. Art off! Art off! <laughs> right? Spooky scene for this art off. So read the poem. This is my take on the poem. Uh, I kind of mixed it with what London had had a take on and just made it nice and spooky and scary for everybody, right? So I love the dramatic scenes like that. Teach you how to paint something nice and creepy for Halloween. Hopefully you, uh, stuff all over me. Hopefully you uh, vote for my painting in the art off and keep the winning streak going between Faye and, uh, and Dean from Scenescape Shop. So we'll see what happens, right? But until then, get your stuff out. There was only... It's six colors that we use to create this painting. So, uh, you know, very easy little thing, not too much detail, very easy sky. Showed you how to make a perfect circle for your moon, right? It looks fantastic. So if you're ready to paint it, I'm ready to teach you. We're gonna do it just like this. Hey guys, today we have phthalo green in an excess amount, uh, dark sienna, phthalo blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, and titanium white on our little teeny tiny palette to show you that you don't need a whole gigantic palette in order to do what we're going to do today on a 16 by 20 inch black canvas. Okay, it's all dry. Haven't done anything to it yet. So what we're going to do is take and put a little bit of color down in that sky and have it act as though our, our liquid clear, right? So I'm going to take a little bit of blue, not a whole lot of color, you don't need a whole lot. Just kind of tap it down into the easel just like that. Get a nice even distribution of color on the, on the brush. I'm going to tap it in and then we're going to go up and just scrub hard into our canvas, right? Can't really see much. It's a transparent color, which means we're not gonna see a whole lot. But all we wanna do is have a little bit of this blue color in our black canvas. So we're gonna work at this. This is where your arm will get real tired, okay? Because you're gonna work hard at it. You're gonna make all this noise, all this mess, and then you can't really see anything, right? But don't worry, there is color getting onto the canvas, okay? And then, you know, up close in your living room or your paint area, wherever you're painting, you'll be able to see it. All right, let's do a little bit of blue over here, right? I just want, I, in this, in this one, we're going to have this line kind of down like this, right? This will be where our, our forest sort of comes in. So we really only need to fill a little bit of this area here. We're not going to do the whole thing, so we want to leave some of it black, of course. Right, really scrub it in there. Nice and hard. You can tell we're putting blue on the, the canvas, even though you might not be able to see it here, but it is nice and blue. And now the canvas is wet, right? So this will be the on wet. Now we're going to take our wet paint and put it on this wet paint and see how it comes out, right? There we go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, we're going to wash that blue off by using our odorless mineral spirits, right? It's fantastic. All the cleaning power with none of the smell, right? You guys know I like to go down and hit mine with a uh, paper towel I have sitting down there out of frame. All right, and get all that phthalo green in there. And we're gonna come back up and do the same thing and just lay this phthalo green down into our scene, right? It'll be everywhere all over the place. Then we can use it if we want. Other bits we don't have to use and it will stay nice and dark, right? But you wanna have this bit in there and you can even see just from the little bit of, of uh, liquid low water mineral spirits that we had on the brush, makes it a whole lot easier for this phthalo green to go on versus how hard we work with the phthalo blue, right? So yeah, that little bit, just from br washing the brush, we get a little bit of paint thinner on the brush and that allows it to blend a little bit easier, right? So your arm doesn't get as tired at this point. Right, maybe there's a little bit of phthalo green up into our sky as well. You never know, you can put it anywhere. And when we go over that, it'll mix with that blue and change into this whole different color that we weren't even planning on. And that's the best part about painting is yours will be different than mine, right? There we go, get it all covered all over the place. Some areas are thicker, some areas are thinner, right? We're gonna make this beautiful spooky scene. There we go. Just getting it everywhere, every which way it wants to be. Get it all over the place. You can see that we changed from that blue to the green, and then we have a lot more green in our brush. We gotta clean out, right? And get it out. Get up on out of there. Okay. 
don't know if you guys can tell from the sound of my voice, I'm trying to project, but I do feel a little bit under the weather today, so we'll see how the thing comes out. But we have this plan, let's roll with the plan. You can put like a moon in there, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff. We could try that, we could put a moon in there, guys, what do you think? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, you can, can clearly see, I had to go check to make sure you could see, you know, where we put the blue versus where we put the green. And it's gonna be great. Now, we could do some crazy clouds, we could do a moon, we could do all sorts of stuff. So let's try it out. Well, don't you, don't you think? We'll try it out. We'll get a little bit of the white, just pure straight up white since we already have all these colors on our canvas, right? Why don't we just go like this? Just make a little circle with your, with your palette knife. Now I want to go in with our one inch brush. It's nice and dry. Really want to make a nice soft circle out of that. You can see if I try to stay out of the way. There we go. Make this nice soft blue circle, right? Looks great. It's fantastic. You can make it as bright as you want. I like having it nice and soft. So then we can come in with our filbert brush into our white again, right? Let's see, nice and thick, right? And then we're gonna put it right in the center of that sucker and just spin the bristles like this. Keep it nice and flat, spin them, you'll make this near perfect circle shape. And then you just lift away and you got yourself a little moon back there that's already high lit and shadowed all on its own. Fantastic little technique, I love it. Okay, now we're gonna come in, take the smallest bit of white on our knife, right? Pull it out real flat, little bit, tiny little roll, because we don't need a whole lot of clouds in this one. What don't we do if we come down like this? All right, we'll just make this bit of cloud kind of however it wants to be. Don't want it to be too bright. So we're using very little amount of paint, right? And we're gonna come in and we'll really push hard on it to blend it, right? Really wanna push hard. Can even take, if it doesn't work, we'll take the littlest bit of paint thinner on the brush. All right, just clean it just a little bit. Then we'll come up here and oh, how she wants to move now. Look at that, all right? All you gotta do is make sure you have that wet on wet, right? Look at that girl grow. Whew. Man, that's a beauty. That is a beautiful blue cloud. My goodness. Okay, now it's nice and wet up there. All right, so we'll have these different sheens on our clouds because we have the paint thinner in there with them. So as you walk or as you look at it from a different angle, it will change, it's really cool. Man, I almost want another one, but that sky is so beautiful how it just kind of blends into the black right there. So we'll highlight our one little cloud, right? Maybe we won't have too many, too many clouds, but we'll highlight our guy so he's got a little bit of life to him, right? Just a little bit where we think the, the light might hit from that moon. Come back with our one inch brush again, very lightly this time. We don't want these white bits to disappear. We just want them to be soft, right? So you make them soft. And now it's only the edges of the clouds that are highlighted. You get all these cool little different looks. Fantastic little things, right? Fantastic. All I'm doing here is just making these circles to make the rest of it as glossy as the, the clouds are. And I love how it's real bright up here and you can't really tell where the rest of the cloud is. That's what you want, because it's a nighttime scene, right? So maybe there's another bit of highlight cloud where the, the moon might be reaching down here, just the very softest little bit of, of light that might have gotten down here to this section of cloud, right? It's just straining. Right, and then we have, boom, another little puff of white to indicate that all the rest of these bits are shadow, right? And we just have these little highlight areas of our sky. It's really neat, really neat. Remember, your clouds don't have to connect. They don't have to look like a certain shape, right? We don't, we don't do that around here. We can even take, if we want, and just swipe over on our moon just the slightest bit, make it nice and soft, but again, leaving all of that, you know, texture and detail from our own little shadowing. Looks great. Now, why don't we clear up a little area on this little tiny palette for us to work. All right, we'll use black, crimson, and blue. 
Maybe a little bit of phthalo green, why not? Just chuck them all in there. Everything but the brown. We're gonna save the brown for like the dirt path. Maybe we'll save it for the building that'll be down here. We'll see, we'll see what it turns out. All right, just mixing it up till it's nice and dark and you can't even tell that there were four colors in there anymore. It's just one solid color. Now I wanna take this solid color and grab my white, right? Cause we really wanna make it a little bit brighter than it is. So I grab the white, mix it up. It's gonna change. Look at that, it's this nice kind of grayish, bluish color now. So after we drop our fan brush on the floor, luckily it didn't have paint on it, right? Come back into that kind of light bluish grayish color. And then we'll come up, you can already see the, uh, the green starting, it's kind of, it's, it's waiting for something to mix with, right? So we'll come up with these bits of kind of grayish, you can see how they stand apart from the black that's back there, right? We don't want our, our trees to be all black because then we won't see any of them. And these guys can be so tall up here. You go as tall as you want. All right, bring them down. And this is the mess that we talk about. Like when you're making a mess, when you have all these crazy trees and they're all growing all the same direction, you get this mess that we talk about when we say make a mess, right? This is the mess. Right? Don't go down too far because I want to have another layer of trees. Right? You don't go too far up into your sky either. We're trying to leave this little mystery area of black that's in between them. It gives it another little layer of depth, right? So don't go too high, don't go too low. Mix a little bit more white with that bluish stuff, just so we've got a little bit of extra paint. Try to match it about the same color, you know what I mean? And maybe on this side we'll come down from here, just tapping, you can see. And we go up, we go down, and then we just sort of fill it in. You just wanna have that grayish color sort of filled in down here. And all about the same sort of fill. So you can't really see what's back there. The forest is so thick, you can't really see. We have this nice spooky little forest back here. Okay, now we're gonna take our two inch brush. It's still got a little bit of paint there on, so let's take a dry two inch brush. All right, and we're gonna come up here, we're just gonna tap into all of these trees real hard. All right, almost all the way to the top. And you wanna create this bit of fog that's in between them, right? A little bit of fogginess in between. You don't want to be able to see every single tree. So you create this bit of fog, right? You can take it with your, with your brush and go make it circles, right? As long as we get this little bit of difference, this soft bit of paint that we can now come in with another layer and put on top of that. You see how we go almost all the way to the top. And that's because our next layer of trees is going to come in almost all the way to the top, right? So you want to have a lot of room back here. And now that we've put our, you know, we've made it just like we made our sky initially, now this is a layer of wet oil paint that we can now put another layer of paint on the top. All right, swipe it, you can go up. You can do whatever you want to do. Now we have this nice soft area of our little foggy mist, and we still have all this green that we're going to work with underneath. It's going to be fabulous. Okay, now I want to come back in with that darker color. We'll see what this looks like when we go and put it up here, right? We should have a difference in color in our trees. The ones in the front are shade, shadowed or shaded, shaded by the ones in the back, right? So you can see there's a difference here. Don't need to make them super detailed. Every so often, if you wanted to have one, you don't kind of stand out from the crowd. You can make him a little bit more detailed, right? Just by doing how we normally make all of our trees, kind of pushing up into the canvas, starting with the corner and then rotating around as you get down, right? That way you use the bigger section of branches down there. Okay, grab the rest of that. And we'll come in over here. Just sort of fill in that lighter space where we made all of our fog with this darker color tree. It looks great. You just want to have those differences, right? So we have these lighter areas and darker areas. And that's what this Halloween painting is about. Speaking of which, we haven't mentioned why we're painting this sort of a painting. We had a, there's an art off between uh, Dean at Scenescape Shop and Faye 
were from Painting with Faye. Or Paint with Faye? I can't remember what it is. I think it's Painting with Faye. So, we're having an art off where Dean's wife, uh, she wrote a poem. Uh, I think her Instagram is Writers of the Lost Art, which is a really cool sort of Instagram name, I thought. And uh, she wrote a poem, we all read the poem, and we've all kind of interpreted the poem as a certain thing. So, that's what we're gonna be kind of showing today, is my interpretation of this poem that Dean's wife uh, had written. She's a professional writer, which is a tough gig nowadays, right? We take a little bit of white and just highlight a little bit of our of our scene here. So, gonna come down and do the littlest bit of these guys as well, right? You want to leave an error of mystery. You don't want to have everything all the same, right? You don't want to have lights against lights. It doesn't really work. You gotta have these little differences in color, right? That's what I say all the time. And layers, right? Not everything is the same. You can tell there's two different bits of forest back here that look fantastic. Okay, now I'm gonna put a little bit of white down here as well. And it's only because I wanna make the fog down here in the front much more pronounced, right? You can take it and do it with our fan brush, literally. You literally do it with your fan brush. Just deposit a little bit of white down underneath these bits of trees. And who knows how tall these trees are? They may go all the way down the bottom of the canvas. You don't know, because this fog kind of hides everything, right? And then at this point, you could take and change your idea and do something totally different just because you like the direction that the painting is going in. You don't always have to follow what we're doing up here, guys. You really don't. Let's see, which one of these was, not there we go. The sort of wet one is the one that I want. There we go, we're gonna make our fog just like this and you can see all the white will start to work in with whatever color you put underneath. So if you have your phthalo green down here, you'll start to notice all this phthalo green fog start to appear at the base of our trees, right? We come up, we grab the tree, we bring it down a little bit, make these different size circles. It's not all the same size circle all the time, right? We make these different circles, different sizes, I'm gonna swipe up on our trees. Just gives the tops of them nice tall tips, right? So I'm gonna skip over this one in the front because it's got a lot of texture. I don't wanna swipe him up. So let's sneak in front of you guys and see what we got going on here. Looks great. Almost looks like we need a little bit more white in our fog down here. It's all kind of gotten the same. I like to have differences in color, right guys? where the white is a little bit different in some places. Again, that's why we make different size circles when we do these. So you, sometimes you make a big circle and then into a couple little circles and then a big circle again and drag it down and drag it up and drag it all over the place. Wherever you want it to be. You can have it as bright as you want it, as dark as you want it, all sorts. I just don't like having it all on the same path, right? If you mix it up like a cloud like this, then you get all these different bits where you have all these different elevations. It's not all on the same straight line, right? And if you listen quietly, you can hear the crickets coming, right? You can hear the nighttime start to come alive. Look at this fog, this spooky bit of fog that's creeping in to our scene. We don't know what it's gonna hide. We don't know what is happening. Maybe it grows up a little bit taller over here and we lose that whole bit of forest. But it makes it look so cool. It's just very creepy. What is gonna be standing in the, in the mist, right? Very scary. Okay, now what I wanted to do here, wow, look at my brown, just go down to brown town. There we go. That's a whole lot of wasted brown right there. Okay, I'm gonna mix some of that brown in with that darker color. Grab a little bit and then maybe decide that way off back here, maybe there's a little bit of a path and that path might get bigger and bigger as it comes towards us, kind of giving us an idea of where the road might be, right? That's pretty good right there. You turn it over and put it on this side, nice and big at the bottom. Maybe the road curves off that way, and then we've got a little place for our inn or our cabin or something that's going to be over here, right? Something nice and big that's going to be back in there. 
Now we can take our, our path and just as straight as you can, go back and forth across it like that. Just as straight as you can. Again, it's not even covering everything, right? But it looks like it's coming out of this mist. And we don't have to cover the whole bit because we're gonna highlight this, okay? But you want it wider down here, thinner as we go. You notice this arc, like it's turning and going back that way. That side's very straight. Maybe we're at a T-junction right here. You can figure it out how you wanna tell your story, right? Just like that. And then we'll go over and highlight that sucker in a little bit. You can even see if we take a little bit of white, I'll just show you just a preview. A little preview, a little bit of white and brown, mostly brown though. I'm gonna keep it dark. And then we can go from the smallest little piece back there and just go back and forth, back and forth, sliding our knife to the side, sort of depositing the paint whenever it wants to drop, it will drop down. And then we'll have some, some scary something or other back here. Right, and again, you can always flatten it over. If you don't like a lot of texture, you can flatten it just with just a few swipes and it looks, it, oh, it just looks amazing. Look at it. All right, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. We know there's gonna be a road here. Now we need to decide on our cabin and the shape. And because this cabin is gonna be nice and close, we're going to have a, a big, use the big knife, okay? So let's see, I'm gonna to wanna to take out lot of this color just sort of planning out my own building in my mind let's see we need to do something and this is why it's great because you can always go back in and fix it if you didn't like what that you know how your cabin looked or the angle that you were thinking about you can literally go back in and get rid of everything you just did and make it nice and pretty uh, pretty again right all right, so let's put our little cabin off. Let's say it's, it's it was the angle that was making me mad. There we go, down like that, down like that, and then over, and down. Two full swipes on the way down, then we'll put our roof off that way, come over there, connect it, and then that's the side of the cabin. See, in our brains, we can set it out before we even do anything. And just with these little scrapes, that's enough to, to tell me how to put it on there. So we're gonna scrape up all that dark paint that we used, right? Doesn't matter if some of the brown's in there. We can always make up more blue, black, crimson. You can throw the thalo green in if you want it. We're not really gonna use a lot more of it. So if you have too much, depends on how much you put in, you know, for your fogginess, right? So, but back to the poem, it's a fantastic poem. I'll put it up. And uh, with, when we post these, you guys will be able to read it. And then you can decide who wins the art off between Faye, Paint with Josh, and Scenescape Shop, right? All right, so let's see. Mine, I took it as a very spooky uh, feel to the, the painting. And maybe because it's getting close to October, you know, I took it as a spooky type of deal. So we're going to paint a spooky scene going in that motif versus a loving sort of, you know, type of deal. We're gonna go spooky. You guys know me, I, I like dramatic paintings, dramatic scenes, right? We're just literally dropping this color on, scooping up the dark color, smooshing it in, bringing our knife down at the same angle that we were, right? There's our roof, this is the side of our building. Now the side, I always like to have just a touch lighter, uh, just a touch lower than where our roof was. And I'll show you when we go to highlight it exactly if you can't see. Okay, I don't wanna go all the way to the side. I wanna have some of that fog back there behind the cabinet. It shows depth, right? So we're gonna fill it all in. We got our side of our cabin is right there, which just helps me, you know, when I'm doing it and trying to highlight it where I should, where I need to be, right? Okay, it doesn't matter how far we go down, we actually may need to go down a bit further if we're gonna be on the same sort of path, you know, the same plane as this path right here. I always like having it a little bit further down than you need, that way you can pull out and create your shadows and stuff. Okay, now speaking of shadows, we need to make this a little bit foggier and, and spookier as well. 
Well, we'll come to that when the time comes. Remember our path comes about here, turns, goes this way. We could have something here, you know, we could do all sorts of things. We put a fence along the side. Maybe we'll have tall fence posts right here. We will figure it out, that's for sure. Okay. Now, I'm going to come back. I'm going to grab that brown, grab our white. All right, really mix it up. Again, more brown than white in this one. You don't need a whole lot of brown, a whole lot of white, because, again, it is a nighttime scene, right? And we'll come up, and again, just drag down, just like we did with the initial paint, right? I'm just smushing it on. I don't really want the paint to break. It will break slightly. We're not trying to go fast. All right, just dumping it down. And however it lays, it lays. You don't want to overdo the uh, wood paneling too much, right? Look at There's some bits of green that are in here just mixed in just because the green is close to the brown and it looks really neat. Let's see. Scrape all that up. And you can see why we did two lengths of the knife. And so then it's perfect for when we come back and put them back in. You don't have to try to judge, right? We did one and a half on this side, two on that side. You can even do another one. You know, you can change it however you want. Okay, now we're gonna go brown. Just the straight up brown on this side because it needs to be darker than the front. All right, two knife lengths straight down. Doesn't even need to go all the way down to the bottom, the color, it really doesn't. It looks fantastic like that. And then you can come back in and add in, you know, lines. Like you literally cut in planks into your wood, right? Kind of space them the same. You can have them different. You can have them all sorts of ways. All right, this guy over here. Bam, now you got this old kind of shaggy building. It's a little rickety old thing, right? Now remember, you need to make your door big enough. A lot of times we paint cabins, I do the same thing. I forget to make the door prospectively big enough to the cabin itself. And I like doing mine off center, right? So let's put it over here, like that, just by pulling sideways. And now we have this opening, this dark opening to a door. I don't know that I want to go inside. I really don't. Take a little bit of that white and blue and just create the smallest, teeniest little bit of line just on the edge of our door, right? Just by cutting it in, just so you have this little bit, even these two little things, I don't know how that happened. Must have been thicker on one side of the knife. All right, just a couple little bits. Don't even need a whole lot. We got this little skinny door. We can even throw in a window. All right, have our window come in, just like that, black it out. Come back in with our white. And just line around the edges. Bam, just like that. You don't even have to do the whole thing, right? We don't want them all to be the same. So differences, differences in color, little different things, right? Now we have this really spooky little cabin out there. Maybe it's open, right? Or you could do different planks. You could do sideways wood for the door or whatever you wanted to do. Okay, now we're gonna take the top because it looks a little strange without it. We're gonna hang off a little bit of eave off the side of the house. Okay, you see what we did there? Same thing, just make it a little bit thicker, bit of roof, overhangs a little, and then we'll go sideways here, create our roof, right? Following our line that we created, and then it went down like that, and now we're just gonna fill it in. Fill it in with the dark. Slide and pull it down, you can mush it on, however you wanna fill it in, right? Make sure you have enough on your knife when you come down to where your other wood meets, so you don't disturb that too much. All right, you can come over the wood a little bit, down to about there. Totally up to you. And depending on how thick your, you know, your paint is, you can have all these little things. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but the light is bouncing off all these little bits of my roof. You can even take and do little shingles just by touching the thick paint that's already there and going down. And now you've got this bit of textured roof. It looks awesome. It looks fantastic. Like this old abandoned building, right? Let's even get a little bit more dark because this building looks like one of those buildings that would sit, you know, raised above, maybe in like Mississippi or, or somewhere wet where you get all this, you know, you get all the critters that live underneath. So maybe we just got a little porch that'll come out. And now we're gonna fill in the bottom with that darker paint, a little bit darker over here. 
There we go. Now give us an area where we can kind of pull it out and play around with it, right? Mess about like this. Pull it down. You can get a little bit of white. Got to get a little bit of white in here. Just so we can see what we're doing, right? Pulling it down to our path. And then we can go back over the path. So don't worry if your path gets all messed up. I'm just going to pull down this way. Just to change the color underneath it. You know what I mean? It's, oh, it's really great. It's nice and spooky and dark. And if you don't like your little path or your, your porch, you can pull it straight out. Right? You can go over your path. We can go back in. We can do whatever we want to do, right? Now it looks like the moon is sort of casting this darker bit of shadow down onto the ground, which is really cool. Or you could even say that back here, it was a little bit more lit up by the moon and then went into the shadow of the house by the time it came down. You know what I mean? Then the house cuts its into its own shadow or it changes color. You do all sorts of stuff. And I want to have this nice thick bit of path that comes down gets thicker, maybe gets highlighted every so often with just a little bit of white, just so you can see at night, right? A little bit of dark, a little bit of brown, all over the place. Just like that, you can come all the way to the side. All right, we don't wanna really go off the edge of the canvas. I like having all of this fog everywhere really great. Maybe the road turns and goes over this way. Right. We're just mushing it in, just creating that texture and everything that's not highlight or dark. You know, you don't have to use everything. You know, just get a little bit of white and come back in and just every so often, just little light, little differences, little bits, differences in color, right? But we always talk about the differences in the color. There we go. Now, before we get too far away, if this is gonna be a spooky painting, we're gonna need like a spooky creature way off in the back, right? So let's get our paint thinner and right into our dark color. A lot of dark color, nice and like inky, right? And then maybe there's this weird creature that lives back here. It's just like a silhouette. This strange thing. There we go, this big crazy little thing. <laughs> Almost looks like a Bigfoot back there, but like much more, you know, much weirder and ganglier, right? Gotta have the gangly word. Just something that I wouldn't want to see standing back there if I were in this scene. Or like, no, 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 going back the other way. Other way. Go the other way. Let's see. You can give it all sorts of little details and stuff. All right, just some weird little gangly creature back there. Might not even be the focal point. You might not even see it right when you first look at it. But it'll be there. It'll be there constantly watching you. Constantly. Need a little bit of liquid white. See if we can't make the smallest. Smallest little blue or uh, white eyeballs you can possibly make. Just this creature standing back. Oh, it looks creepy. <laughs> it looks creepy. I'm getting back here. Just all sorts of strange. You can make yours as strange as you want. Right, I'm gonna get rid of a lot of this white. There's too much white on the brush. You can add it with blue, change the colors up, right? Highlight on certain places. This weird gangly thing. 
with its freaking white eyes just staring at us. Ooh, it's strange. It's strange. But that's why we like it. It's creepy, right? Creepy old thing. Maybe it's just got tentacles for arms. All sorts of crazy stuff. Let's wash off this brush over here. All right. Now we can even make him a little foggy. Take our, our little white and brown on our brush, right? All sorts of different things we can create. This mist, or we can have different patches, different colors of mist. Just from picking up some of that brown back there, maybe you can't even see the bottom of his feet. Oh, I like that. Can't even see it. All sorts of nonsense. There we go. This is a good looking painting, you guys. Very light. Very lightly going over. I don't even think that we need a whole lot of anything else. It looks great. Look at that. Right, we don't know where the path is. Is he on the path? Is he off the path? We can come back in and... Ah, there's the path as it comes down. We have all these crazy, creepy little things in there, right? Because it's Halloween. It is Halloween. Let's see. What can we do with all of this thick paint right here, right? No, we need to stick it down. Now, if we take a little bit of white and just highlight the top of it. And then just very slightly pull down. There we go. Now it looks like he's got a little step in front of the house, right? Or at least it's raised up off the floor. Come back in, put another little step in front. There we go. And of course, I like this little guy. A couple little steps in front of his house, right? That's what it looks like to me. That's what it looks like to you. Little steps. Not so super bright, though. And again, you want to have that one bit of dark line in between your light colors to separate your steps, right? There we go. That looks a bit better. That looks a bit better. Take some of that color out. Go back in, highlight our path again. Just a little bit of white. Just a little bit. You get this really creepy little guy over here. Looks great. Okay, since we have all this dark paint, we might as well make a spooky tree. Kind of hide behind that guy. So get our crimson, our black, blue if you want. And just get them all. Just grab them all. More crimson than anything else in this one. All right, let's look and see. Maybe we got a big tree that lives right over here. Just like that. It's a nice curved little tree. I love curving them. Gotta have it curved. All right, and then as we get down, you push harder with your brush against the canvas, expanding the branches. Gotta expand them outwards, and then you'll get this thick trunk. And I don't like going all the way off the, the very bottom, just because it almost, it's very similar to the tree over here. As you can see, we haven't even mentioned, the wall is bare, right? We're going to be at the Apothecarium, uh, what's it, a couple days. So I've taken all the best pieces from here over to there, and uh, yeah, it's been fantastic. I can't wait to get in there. Go after work on Friday, hang them up. Or maybe Thursday, we'll see. But yeah, you know, it's in the poem it talks about, you know, if you watch over me, I'll watch over you. And it sounds very loving until you think about it in a dark way. And this guy is watching over whoever's inhabiting this building. Maybe it was, maybe it was his building you know, back in time when he was alive. And he goes back to check on it every so often. You never know. Never know. There we go. Just making little bits, just differences, right? So it's not the same. Everything's kind of foggy. It's not, 
nothing is real crisp and clear between the, all these lines. We got our road that goes off, it comes over here. Maybe there's something, maybe there's a bush right here that we can see. All sorts of stuff. Okay, let's get our liner brush again, fill it with that same color that we made the branch out of, right? And then we'll come down and just create a couple, few little branches for this guy. Off to the side. One like they're coming out of the tree. You know, maybe this guy goes up this way. Goes that way. And then we gotta come back and highlight it so don't go too crazy, right? Maybe this one comes out and we got a little wisp. Just like that. All right, looks like it's coming out of the tree right at us. Couple little branches, like it's a bit of, it's a hand or something, right? Make yours however you want. Maybe our branch goes right over the top of this guy, kind of adding, you know, giving us a reason to look at him. And then we'll come back and make our little twisty branches. Yeah, it was a great poem that Dean's wife wrote, and I'm super excited for this art off. So, I'm trying to do as best as possible for you guys, right? And if you see it in the art off and you've caught this video, then uh, vote for me, of course, right? Ooh, look at how spooky and scary it is. You can even take your liner brush sometimes and wiggle it down like this, and you'll get all this bark. You see how it make a little shape like that? Wiggle it down, wiggle it down. You can change it, you can change the look of it very easily, and you get almost this highlit tree in the shadow, right? You don't even have to do much to it. Okay. Now I'm gonna get a little bit of our liquid uh, low odor mineral spirits, or no odor, odorless, and the white, right? It's gonna turn into this kind of grayish color. And then we're gonna go back over and wherever we think the light might be hitting our branches, right? Then we can highlight it there. So maybe this guy is up like that. This one's over here. Maybe a bit there. Some down the side of the tree, see what I mean? We can highlight and sort of show where the light is hitting. Where do we want it to hit? Go back, get some more paint thinner, because you have to be very, very light. There we go. We use paint thinner to create our branches, right? So you can't put a whole lot of paint thinner on top of a whole lot of light paint thinner. It's not really gonna work. Yeah, put a little bit of light off of there. And on the side of the tree, one more little bit up here. Why don't we float for you guys, show you how difficult it is. Bam, 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 bam. Just like that, got a little bit of tree branch hanging out there. Don't even really need to go crazy. Now, I like highlighting the trees. So why don't we use this little bit of, we'll just kind of pull over with this. It's almost a very purpley color. I like it, because we don't need a whole lot of bright, right? It's nighttime. It's nighttime, guys. Don't need a whole lot of bright. All the way to the top of our tree. Looks fantastic. Doesn't need to be bright, right? You just want to know that it's there. That's literally it. Literally it. Bam. Can even take if we really wanted to be brave. If we really wanted to be brave. We can get the very tip top of our tree. And that'll stick out like that, right? Then go down. Sort of just very lightly letting everyone know, hey, this is the edge of the tree from all this other color, all right? And don't go straight over your branches down here. Otherwise, it'll look like you cut them right off. Okay, take our tree down around the bottom. Pull them out a little bit. It's looking good, actually. Looking good, but it's not done. I'm never done for some reason. I just can't be done. <laughs> just can't be finished, because I always see something that might look a little bit cooler if we did this, or you know, this or that. And so very similar to the one that's back here that we're auctioning off, you know, that we did auction off, or raffle off uh, last Sunday. That's the thing. Here we go. Okay, we're going to make these, again, compared to the size of our house, our fence posts need to be large if they're going to be up front, right? They're going to be big. They're going to be tall enough to 
worthy offense. You can't have a fence that's this high. You know what I mean? It's not going to look like it's supposed to even be there. All right, so why don't we do one? We're going to have to kill this part of our branch. A little bit taller than the other fence post, right? And still see there's something behind it, right? And then we can highlight that. And then back here, we'll have the last fence post. Again, getting taller as you go. Okay, so that one looks a little bit further away. This one looks a little bit closer up. Just like that. Now we can take a little bit of brown, a little bit of white. Again, much less white than brown because we want it to be dark. Not, not invisible, but not super bright either. So sometimes you have to go back into that brown. Grab up a little bit. Oh shoot, we didn't do the, uh, I did this the other day too. Same exact thing. Okay, let's put in our little side beams. All right, so here, got one. And maybe this one's fallen off. So it's down over here. I love putting in the broken branches. I don't know why. Just love it. it just add something a little bit different, right? Okay, now we're gonna come in. I'm gonna grab up that highlight color and just pull it over just about halfway. And that way, your whole beam isn't lit, right? Because again, it's dark, and we wouldn't really be able to see all of it anyway. So just go about halfway over your shadow, right? Not halfway down on these cross beams. Again, these bottom ones even don't need to be very bright at all. This one perhaps, because it's getting a little bit more light from the the moon coming down, but the ones back here, they don't need to be very bright. Just like that, we've got this creepy creature that's watching over this building. We should put something over here, I'd imagine. I would imagine we could do that. There we go. Pull it down, gonna pull it out. Over here, it's very dark. Then we can take a little bit more of that dirt path just stick it back in here, just kind of mushing it with that color, just so we know that it continues on over this way, right? Get that curve action, like we're standing in the whole front of it, and over here it's got this crazy creature kicking up dust as it's walking through. Oh, it's creepy. How am I going to sleep tonight, you guys? How are we going to sleep? I like our little steps. I like that they're also sort of high lit, like, uh, uh, cinder blocks almost. You know what I mean? Very dark though. Don't need it to be super bright. And we want to keep them on the same angle that they're supposed to be, right? So it looks like it's sitting up because we came down and then up again. Now that we have our shape that we want to rock with, and there's our little step in the front. It's beautiful. Let's take our round brush and give this guy like a big old bush or something. All right, we've got all this extra paint. So we're gonna come in very firm and thick over the, over the cabin. You have to cover over some of it to push it behind, right? Gonna push it back. Maybe this bit grows down around here. It's this old, crazy old guy. Maybe we got some back here. Bam, on either side of his cabin, right? You can, <laughs> sometimes it's easy to sneak stuff back in there. Sometimes it's not. So be careful. Now it looks like we've got this row of bushes leading you to this crazy dude. But be careful. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it ain't. There we go. Now again, since we're trying to be very dark back here, we can take some, we take some land, pull it in. Maybe there's a big rock over there. Or the road continues on out that way. In which case it needs to be darker. There we go. It doesn't help to scrape in any sticks or twigs on a black canvas, I'll tell you that. So we'll have to go back and add those in. Now I'm losing my path back here. Every time we add something new, we lose a little bit of our path, right? Gotta keep it alive back there. If yours is still good, then good. Right? I like making mine a little bit textured too. Like this is the dirt. All these little bits of dirt that are back laid on top of each other in here. All sorts of crazy. Kind of touch my fence post over there. There we go. 
So yeah, we've got our nice cabin. I almost want, get that green off of there. I almost want a little bit, I'm gonna show you right here, just on the edge, we're gonna make a dark black line. Cause it wasn't very straight, right? So the paint didn't fill it all in for me. There we go. Just a little bit of dark, gives it like that corner, like it's rounded now, it wants to go the other way. Let's see, we can even do a bit of fence right outside the dude's door. And again, these ones are gonna be a little bit smaller because they're further away in our mind, right? So closer to the house, they're gonna be smaller than, they, than these ones are, which are closer to us. Okay, make sure your angles are right so you can see that we're going down like that. Come back in, just the touch of a highlight. You don't need much. Okay, again, on the side of the light, which is the left side, or the right side, excuse me. Need to get up enough paint here. Just like that, just on the side. And now we have this rounded sort of look, right? Creepy, don't stick me out there. I don't want to be out there with this guy. He scares me a little bit, okay? Put a little bit of dirt back behind those bushes too. Now let's take that brush, uh, wash it off, and then we're gonna highlight those bushes. We'll call it done. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit of white, a little bit of phthalo green, and mix those together in here. A little bit of liquid white as well. The liquid white will help it stick, okay? Or your blending medium, whatever you wanna say. That'll help it stick. I wanna use a fair amount of phthalo green to keep them nice and greenish. Then we can come in and just add in little bits to give our bush depth, right? We're not covering up everything. Just want to give it a little bit of depth. Looks great. All that work, loading the brush just for four little dabs on it, and then we're done. Look at that, guys. It looks great. Okay, we even take a little bit of that white on our brush with the liquid white and everything, come in and add little bits of branches that might have gotten high lit by the light of the moon, right? In the darker areas. You put those branches in the darker areas, gives you something to look at when you're down there. Maybe this guy's got something you know, happening down at the bottom of his tree trunk down here. Who knows what it is? Could be a bit of moss, could be anything. Be a little light sheen. Anything could be happening down there, right? One last little swipe over my path and we will call it good. Look at how great this came out, you guys. My oh my. My oh my, what a wonderful day. Let's see, a little bit of brown just on the top. Just on the top so we know it's up there. And that is it. So I hope you guys aren't too freaked out by this one and uh, you give it a try and you'll, you'll come up with all these crazy things just from putting those different colors down. Looks fantastic. There's nothing I would change about it. It's very creepy and spooky and uh, I kind of want to go hide and get in bed. So uh, until the next painting, uh, catch us on Sunday. Uh, all the new links, Paint with Josh, all that stuff. I'll be at the Apothecarium during October. So Come check me out there. I'll have all the artwork all over the walls. This one will definitely be down there uh, hoping to be sold, right? And then we'll create more and more and more. So uh, hopefully you learned something from this video. Uh, hopefully you vote for me with this art off, right? And uh, we'll get these votes done. We'll see what they came up with. I'm sure theirs is much more bright and nice, but I took a creepy view of watching over somebody, right? Or watching over a place. So maybe this house is where the the creature lives and if he watches over it, then it, the house will watch over him. It's fantastic. So read the poem and uh, you know, give, decide who the winner is. And I can't wait to hear from uh, you know everybody. So until then, catch us on Sunday and uh, me and London will be back to paint something new. So we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.